All right, welcome back everybody to Simple Harmonic Motion. Today we're going to be talking more about period, frequency, and angular frequency. I know we touched at it at the beginning of this chapter, but we're just going to go into it a little bit more. Okay, so maybe before I go into it, I should just mention the period is how long it takes to make one cycle. So if something is going back and forth, how long it takes to go back and forth one time. Angular frequency, it's a little bit hard to think about, but I just want you to think about kind of like the speed of the oscillation. For now, that's just how I want you to think about it, okay? All right, this is a good video that shows how similar simple harmonic motion is to uniform circular motion. So I would definitely suggest watching it if you can. Uh, it's a great intro. Um, okay, so one thing. So we know that the kinetic energy max in an oscillation system is equal to the elastic potential energy max. Okay, so that's one thing that we should know. From that previous video, we realized how the motion of simple harmonic motion and uniform circular motion is the same and how the velocity is going to be the same in that instance. So <clears throat> just like we learned about in uniform circular motion that velocity is equal to 2 pi r, how, how uh, the circumference of the circle divided by how long it takes to go around the circle. If you remember this from uniform circular motion. So we can kind of like plug this in, derive this new equation, t is equal to two pi square root of m over k. Again, um, you don't really have to know any of this. You could just kind of memorize this equation or just have this on your formula sheet, but this is to know where that uh, equation came from. Okay, moving on. So this is a period of a mass and spring system. Okay, so example number seven. A mass spring oscillation system has a spring constant of 80 newton per meter and a mass of 0.8 kilograms. A, what is the period? B, what is the frequency? Okay, the period, uh, remember, is gonna be equal. We just derived this, two pi square root of m over k. So we have two pi, m is 0.8, and k is 80. Now let's just put this into our formula sheet. 0.8 divided by 80 square root um, times 2 pi. And we get 0 0.63, I'd say 0 0.63 seconds. Again, let's. what does this mean up here? That means that it has gone back and forth in 0 0.63 seconds, okay? That's how long it took to go oscillate one full time, one full cycle. What is the period? Let's again think about what period is, I mean, for what frequency is. Frequency is how many times it can oscillate back and forth in one second. So we should know again, uh, frequency is the inverse of period. So I'm just gonna do one divided by 0.63. And then let's see what we get. One divided by 0.63. And we get 1.58 times hertz. So what is this telling us? Let's say it starts all the way at the amplitude over here. And this is the other amplitude, the negative one. It's gonna go all the way there and back. And it's gonna go around there all in one second. So in one second, that's how fast it's gonna be. At. That's how fast it's gonna go, okay? 1.58 Hertz. Um, all right, uh, moving on. All right, example number eight. A spring is mounted horizontally with its left end fixed. A force of six newton is causing displacement of 0 0.03 meters. A 0 0.5 kilogram glider is placed on the frequency track, air track, and pulled 0 0.02 meters and released from rest. Okay, so we're using the same spring here. A, what is the force constant of the spring? So we're looking for the spring constant here. Again, we should know that the force of the spring is equal to kx, okay? That's Hooke's law. So we know the force of the spring, we're stretching it six newtons. And we don't know what the spring constant is, that's what we're looking for, but we do know that when we use six newtons of force, it stretches 0 0.03 meters. I'm gonna do 0 0.03, and let's see what we get for k. Six divided by 0 0.03, we get 200 newton per meter. Okay, 
Uh, part B is the angular frequency. I know that we haven't looked at the formula in a while. That was kind of like the introductory lesson, but we should know that the angular frequency is equal to two pi times frequency or two pi divided by T. Okay, you, either one you want to use. Uh, do we have any information? Uh, we don't know. Well, we, I guess we have to find the period first. So I'm actually going to do part C first. We know that the period is equal to two pi M over K. So we have two pi. The mass is, uh, 0 0.5 kilogram glider. And we found K that's divided by 200. So let's find what the T is. 0.5 divided by 200 square root of that times 2 pi and we get 0 0.31 again this is how long it takes to make a full oscillation a full cycle now that we do know that we could find the angular frequency which is 2 pi divided by 0 0.31 let's see this 2 times pi divided by 0.31 and we get 20.27 radians per second. Okay. Oh, whoops, sorry. I never forgot. I found the frequency, which is 1 over T. So 1 over 0 0.31. And that is 3.22. Okay. All right. Moving on. Okay, an unknown mass is attached to an ideal spring with a force constant of 120 newton per meter. Let me just put that there. It is found that uh, uh, it is found to vibrate with a frequency of six hertz. Okay. Uh, find a the period of motion. Okay. So what is this telling us, this frequency of 6 hertz? That means in 1 second, it has gone back and forth 6 times. Okay? So we know that the period is going to be pretty small. It's going pretty fast. So period is equal to the inverse of frequency. So let's find what that is going to be. 1 divided by 6. 0 0.17 seconds. Okay? Uh, what is the angular frequency? It's going to be angular frequency is going to be equal to 2 pi times frequency. So 2 pi frequency is 6. 12 times pi. 37.7 radians per second. What is the mass of the body? Okay, great. Let's see. What do we have? We have K? Okay, so I think we can do... The period is equal, well, part C, to 2 pi square root of m over k. So this is 2 pi square root of mass. The mass is unknown. That's what we're looking for. k is 120. And we know the period is 0 0.17. All right, so let's do something 0. 0.17 divided by parentheses 2 pi. Whenever you're using that pi, make sure it, things are in parentheses or you're going to get some weird numbers. Great. Squared times 120. And then I get the mass is equal to 0 0.09 kilograms. Okay. Uh, D, how would the period of motion change if the mass of the object increased? Okay, so a lot of times when looking at questions like this, you want to intuitively think about it. My suggestion is to more analyze it and look at the formula. So we have period is equal to 2 pi square root of m over k. What we can notice is if this m, if this m goes up, since it's in the numerator, that means this period will also go up. So it'll also increase. Mass increases, the period increases. Okay, example number 10. A 0 0.2 kilogram air track glider is attached to an ideal spring of negligible mass and starts oscillating. So this is 0 0.2 kilograms. 
The elapsed time from when the glider first moves through the equilibrium position to the second time it uh, moves through the, that point is 0.26 seconds. So what this is saying is, let's say this is the equilibrium position, and let's say this is the amplitude, and let's say this is the negative amplitude. That means for it to go from here to here, this time is equal to 2.6 seconds. I want you to know that is not the period. The period, oops, the period would be from here, here, and then back again, one full cycle. So you can see that this 2.6 seconds is half a cycle. Okay, anyway, find the spring constant. So we should know that the period is equal to 5.2 seconds, double this 2.6. Now that we know that, we can do period is equal to 2 pi square root of m over k. Period is 5.2, 2 pi, mass is given, 0.2, and then k is what we're looking for. So let's do this, 5.2 divided by parentheses 2 pi, um, square root of that, and then I can do 0.2 divided by the answer. And we, I get k is equal to 0 0.29 newton per meter. Okay. Hopefully that all made sense and that was good. Uh, moving on, leave to the last one. Conceptual example number two. An object is undergoing simple harmonic motion with a period of 0 0.9 seconds and has an amplitude of 0.32 meters. At time t equals 0, the object is at x position 0.32 meters and is instantaneously at rest. Calculate the time it takes for the object to go from 0.32 meters to, uh, to position 0. So we want to know how long does it take to go from here to here. Okay, what does this time take? We know that when it oscillates back and forth, one full oscillation is equal to 0.9 seconds. Okay, so when it's, it's just going, a full oscillation is here, to here, to here, to here. What this tells us is this, just this leg of the journey, which we're looking for, is going to be one fourth of the period. So that's going to be 0 0.9 divided by 4, and that's going to give us 0.225 seconds. Okay, hope that all made sense. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.